we're here to talk to you about the website and how it got started, talk about veganism. Um, so I was wondering if you could explain, you know, for people who aren't familiar with Plant Based on a Budget, what it is and what, you know, how it all got started. Yes, of course. I started Plant Based on a Budget in 2012, mm -hmm. so five years ago. I can't believe it's been so long already. Yeah. Um, I, well, first I'll explain what it is. And it is a website that provides free resources for people who are budget conscious. Mm -hmm. So I have things like meal plans that show how to eat for $25 per week mm -hmm. uh, with a food budget of $25 per week, which is about $1.20 per meal. Okay. So it's very inexpensive. Yeah. And I have video tutorials for recipes. I have articles and hundreds and hundreds of, of recipes mm -hmm. that are pretty diverse. Some are gluten-free, some are oil-free, some are uh, Mexican, Ethiopian, like uh, every type of food you can think of. Mm -hmm. Why do you think focusing on budget is so important? Well, because the majority of people can't spend a lot of money. I mean, like, 99% of the country can't spend a lot of money shopping mm -hmm. at Whole Foods. Every, every grocery shopping trip, a lot of people shop at Walmart, a lot of people shop at Costco. Yeah. And um, stores like the big warehouse type grocery stores in their neighborhoods and some people don't even have access to grocery stores some people have ch to shop at the local corner store mm -hmm. or take buses to get to grocery stores which are still not whole foods because whole foods doesn't go into lots of types of neighborhoods yeah uh, so i think it's important that we reach everyone and not just a specific type of person yeah for sure Completely agree. You managed to create a weekly plan of twenty five dollars a week to spend mm -hmm. on money. Um, how did you do that? Like, what are your top tips um, to save money when buying, you know, vegan items? Um, my biggest tip in starting the process is uh, finding stores that maybe make you get out of your comfort zone. So. The closest store to me is a Rayleigh's. It's one block away, but Rayleigh's mm -hmm. isn't the cheapest store. If I travel maybe 10 minutes that way, mm -hmm. there's an extremely cheap store, which I think people often overlook because it's a big warehouse grocery store. It's like okay. not appealing to look at really. It People think, oh, there are no vegan options there. Mm -hmm. and, and so they just don't go to big giant grocery stores like that that are this one is Winco Foods. Okay. And then there's Foods Co., which is also nearby. And they just don't sound familiar. Like they're not Safeway. Yeah. And uh, Rayleigh's, Sprouts, which I, I like Sprouts a lot. But mm -hmm. uh, I, would, I would say explore the options in your area and, like, the parameter you're comfortable with traveling. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised at the gems you can find in that pool. Winco is good for several reasons. Biggest being they have an impressive bulk section, so I recommend purchasing in bulk if that's an option. Mm -hmm. And then they also have very discounted produce. So there are lots of ways to get cheap produce. You can go to the farmer's market and ask for discounts at the very end of the farmer's market. So if your farmer's market ends at noon, go at like 11.50 and find the vendors in advance that you want to go and say, mm -hmm. do you have any leftover produce that you're willing to um, discount? And often, the majority of time, they'll say yes because they don't want to travel with it. Okay. And there are times I leave our farmer's market with like 25 pounds of food where they give they put boxes yeah. for $5 and they'll just like shove all of these whatever they were selling in boxes, mm -hmm. and then they charge $5 per box. So you're getting 25 pounds of food for $5. Wow. And at some point you're like, what am I gonna do with all these peaches? <laughs> and I got really creative, sometimes I get really creative. I get, I like start dehydrating, I start pureeing, <laughs> I start um, baking everyone pies. Oh wow. Yeah, it's really ridiculous, <laughs> but it's fun. And, 
You can also do the same at grocery stores, uh, ask for the imperfect produce. So if they have um, bananas that are browning, yeah. they'll give those to you at a discount, but they've already taken them off the floor. So if you ask a clerk who works in the produce section, uh, it may not be the first time you ask, but mm, some grocery stores and some people will, will give you like a bag of discounted uh, imperfect produce okay and then meal planning is really important shopping with intention not going in blindly and being like hmm this looks good mm, this looks good uh, and buying only what you need okay so I recommend people doing things such as bringing a measuring cup if they have bulk bins so that if you have a recipe you're following you're only purchasing what you're what you need to buy it's less wasteful mm -hmm. and it's a lot cheaper. That's a, that's a really great tip. I've never thought of doing that. And the meal planning is a great idea. Yeah, meal planning is great. <laughs> so you don't feel stranded at the grocery store picking yeah. everything that looks amazing. Have you always been creative in the kitchen? No, I am not formally trained in, mm -hmm. in culinary arts, but I have been poor a lot. So you get creative with uh, what you eat because you don't have the luxury of going out to eat and you don't have the luxury of buying like the fancy cool vegan products. And yeah. so most of the way I cook is whole, whole plant-based foods. Um, and I think when you get creative in the kitchen, you can, so what I used to do was go to the, with the library and photocopy recipes that I wanted. And then I would invite my friends over and we would do this thing once a week where I would pick what the meal was going to be. Mm -hmm. And then I would text my friends what to bring based on that meal. And so then you would bring two ingredients and you would bring two ingredients and you would bring two ingredients and I'd bring two ingredients. And then total we would all be spending like two or three dollars but having this really beautiful tasty complicated like not complicated but like complex meal mm -hmm. uh, so that's how I started what is your uh, go-to meal like if you're in a rush and you know you've got a really busy day you got to make something in like five minutes what what is something that you like whip up or what do you normally do always tacos tacos always tacos tacos are my I eat tacos like they're going out of style. <laughs> Breakfast tacos, lunch tacos, dinner tacos, dessert tacos. I love tacos. Yeah. <laughs> but if you don't have a lot of time and you do the processed meats, one one that I do um, recommend to people is the soy riso. Uh, it's very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. For it's it's about. I, I put up a picture recently on my on my plant based on a budget Instagram that it is um, cost comparable to real meat. It's one of the only ones that is. It's in the meat section, mm -hmm. right next to the chor chorizo, mm -hmm. and it was like one fifty seven for all of them, including the soy chorizo. Okay. And uh, what I what I like to do is split it so you're not using the whole thing, and then take beans like a can of beans and mix it up in there, and it is so good, yeah. especially if you're doing something like breakfast potatoes with your tacos. That sounds amazing. That's yeah, really, really good. I serve it to my family and they love it and they're omnivores. Yeah. Uh, some easy things if you're considering veganism, um, starting with dairy milk. Mm -hmm. uh, non uh, Plant-based milks <coughs> are easily accessible. They're yeah. inexpensive and that's a really great place to start. Uh, giving up chicken, great place to start. Uh, and then continuing to progress as you feel more comfortable with it. Yeah. And if you do accidentally fall off, then come back on. Like, yeah. not a big deal. No one's going to be a jerk, and if they are, then they're not, they're not nice. I hear that often. Like, oh, I, I went traveling, and I stopped eating, and I'm like, well... You're back. <laughs> you're not traveling anymore. You're not traveling anymore, so it's a great time. Yeah. It's a great time to start. That's a really supportive attitude. Um, I'm, I'm interested to hear what you, like, what kind of advice you give to a vegan um, 
who is trying to maybe get their family to eat more vegan or friends or you know how vegans deal with non-vegans do you have any advice on that like how to encourage people and be supportive and for my family over the years what I do is I share with them my passions in a way that is not really threatening to them and doesn't cause them to come become defensive but I'll say for my birthday I will not accept gifts I don't really want things but I do want actions and so if my family says what would you like to do to celebrate your birthday I will mm -hmm. say let's go to a sanctuary that would be really fun or let's um, watch this documentary and eat a vegan pizza and those things have been uh, have had good results for me mm -hmm. where my family isn't as defensive to the information because I'm not the one giving it. I think when you're okay. the one giving it, it's a little bit harder for your closest friends and family to hear because yeah. that's your thing. Like, of course you're going to tell me that, but when other people are telling me, then mm -hmm. then it's different. And again, with, like I've taken my parents to a sanctuary several times and meeting the animals is important. And I know that that's not an option for everyone, but food is great like sharing food bringing yeah. food and sharing it instead of thinking gosh there's going to be nothing I can eat at this dinner and that's going to be miserable think I'm going to bring this meal to share with everyone so I always bring my own entree mm -hmm. and then I make enough so that everyone can eat it and now and often I make the best thing at the table mm -hmm. because it's it's new and like not the same old like, yeah. chicken yeah uh but it, it has good it's very flavorful and healthy and uh, i think that people like that they just don't know how to how to do it right and so then everyone loves it and they're like oh my gosh this is so good can i have the recipe and now i just gave everyone a vegan recipe and that's been amazing is there a particular dish that you would normally go to 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 convince or you know to win over them the hearts of people who are not vegan? That's a really, really good question. Uh, I have done all kinds of things, but I think my go-to's for, um, for like a picnic potluck, like a barbecue, mm -hmm. uh, I have brought the fake meats, Yeah. but I also do things like skewers, uh, because people, I think, think that barbecue skewers often have to be like meat based but I'll make mm. a delicious marinade and um, make them all pretty so then that they're like wow this is beautiful <laughs> and then they get to barbecue something yeah and I get to be part of the process and they get to try this new healthier option and sometimes I'll put like tofu blocks that I've um, that I've marinated or um, just do vegetables and everyone usually likes that. I do a good quinoa salad that has, uh, I flavor the quinoa in a broth mm -hmm. and then I put cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, um, sometimes lemon juice and oh, olives, mm -hmm. like your favorite type of olives and red onion and that is a big hit. It's, okay. it's lighter than something like a potato salad and I think that for people who are already eating this big meal that this mm -hmm. is the thing like oh this this looks good because I'm my stomach can't handle more of this heavy <laughs> food the heavy stuff mm -hmm. okay no that's a really good tip I like that so you've also come out with a new recipe book mm -hmm. um can you tell us more about that yeah uh so the book is called the super easy vegan slow cooker cookbook okay. and it was not originally my idea a publisher approached me and said we looked over your blog and this looks like it would be something up your alley would you be interested and at first I was like slow cookers I like slow cookers but I don't really that's not my thing but the more I thought about it, it was in line with my mission to make veganism easy and cheap and healthy and accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find a slow cooker at 
a thrift store for like four bucks and oh, okay. if you get it new I went to check prices at Walmart and it was like I think thirteen dollars for a slow cooker and you slow cooker and Amazon has one for fourteen dollars a big obstacle for a lot of people is that they're so busy and the premise of this book was to get all the active prep done for the meal in 15 minutes or less so I did all of the prep in 15 minutes or less for all of the recipes. You just cut the recipes, throw them in there. There's no sauteing things first. There's no, it's just like cut recipe, cut ingredients, mm -hmm. throw in pot, cover, leave for eight hours while you're at work, come back, and then you have a meal. And <laughs> I really just thought that there's really nothing better than that. Like, Ideas that you have, like, you know, maybe without the slow cooker. Um, to kind of like debunk that myth of convenience and vegan food. Yeah, my my tips for that are, again, meal planning is important. Mm -hmm. If you know what you're eating, and you know how you can prep for for the week, mm -hmm. you're way ahead of the game. A lot of people spend a lot of energy figuring out like, what am I gonna cook today for dinner? Okay, well mm -hmm. I think I have this, but now I have to go to the grocery store yeah. and pick this up and uh, well, that's gonna take me this long. So they just invest a lot of energy that is unnecessary if you spend all of your energy being like, okay, uh, here's the week. Monday, I'm gonna eat this. Tuesday, I'll eat leftovers. Wednesday, I'll make this. Thursday, I'll eat leftovers. Mm -hmm. um, you'll do a good job. And I, in my meal planning, I do four entrees. Mm -hmm. So I'll do four things that you'll rotate through the week. So mm -hmm. you're not getting tired of one thing because you just made one big batch of chili for the week and you're mm -hmm. eating chili every single day, but you're mixing it up, you're having different things for lunch and you can eat leftovers from this meal on this day and then leftovers from this meal on this day and you're not using the same leftovers over and over and over, which I also have tips for that. Like if you do make one big pot of something, mm -hmm. uh, you can flavor it differently. Like do something really bland and when you're using it throughout the week, flavor it differently. Put nutritional yeast mm -hmm. on it one day. Put um, like a peanut sauce on it one day. Put like you don't have to eat the same exact mm -hmm. thing, but you can continue to be creative. If I'm making um, vegetables, rice, and lentils, yeah, you know it doesn't. You can make that basic meal for the week and then do something different with them every day that's a great idea you can pre-prep your meals and i recommend when you're meal planning and then when you go grocery i recommend doing it all in one day so if you have a sunday mm -hmm. that's free wake up do your chores get your grocery list going go to the grocery store come home prep your meals mm -hmm. and then be done for the entire week uh, when and by prepping your meals i mean uh, cut your vegetables um, throw them in little Tupperware or plastic baggies, whatever you have. And I like to organize mine. So, um, for example, if I know that I'm having a big salad for lunch on Tuesday, mm -hmm. I, I do the salads earlier in the week before I've made anything for um, leftovers. So I'll start like Monday. Monday I'll have a salad for lunch because I haven't made dinner on Monday night yet. Mm -hmm. uh, when I do that, I'll prep that the night before and put it all in a Tupperware. So all I have to do is take the Tupperware off and eat it the next day. And then I'll put, um, I'll get oatmeal mm -hmm. and I'll put some frozen fruit in there and whatever else I want in my oatmeal and then I'll close it. And then the next day, all I need to do is pour it and put milk in it. Okay. And then um, smoothies. I package everything that goes in the smoothie minus the liquid and then the on Thursday when it's smoothie day I'll just pour everything in the blender so that I don't have to like cut anything I don't have to do anything all that's done I just have already um, prepared I've prepared it all okay those are really great tips that's awesome so if anyone checks out anything that I've done and they are on a tight budget I recommend it be the meal planning because that is my baby project. Like that is from my brain and from my heart. Yeah. Uh, and it shows you how to eat for $25 per week. Mm -hmm. And I have four free ones and then I have some that are paid. I have two paid ones that are $5 and those were a collaboration between m myself and a woman named Michelle Kane who runs the website World of Vegan. Mm -hmm. And those are cleaner polished versions where you can have a, it's, it's like, 
set up in a format that's like in a book okay an ebook and you can print the grocery shopping list and take that with you and it's broken down by like which aisles you're going into like this is a produce aisle this is a mm-hmm. bulk bin item wow. aisle so it, that is really thorough and that's why they're five dollars each okay um but then i have four free ones i show you how to use 100 percent of the ingredients that you're purchasing i know many people are super grateful to be you know saving money and getting all these tips and eating healthy and not having to spend more than they're already spending so thank you yeah you're doing an amazing job um yeah so i'm gonna leave the links below to plantbasedinabudget.com check them out uh check the meal plans out and all the recipes it's a really really cool website um there are a lot of resources which you know will help you on your way even if you've been vegan for a while like there's some great recipes up there um and yeah thank you so much thank you for your time yeah thank you for all being here for you